राधिका प्रेया मधवो राधिका धव तस्मादपि गरीयान्यो कृपालुर्मि जगद् गुरु जन्माद्यस्य यतोन वयादितरतश्चार्थे श्वभिग्यस्वराट तेने ब्रह्महृदा या आदिकवये मुह्यंतियत सूरया तेजो वारी मृदाम यथा विनिमयो यत्र त्रिसर्गो मृषा धामना स्वेन सदा निरस्त कुहकम सत्यम परम धीमहि नमः कमलनाथ भाय नमः कमल मालिने नमः कमल पादाये नमस्ते कमलेक्षन यो ब्रह्माण्डम विदधाति पूर्वम यो वै वेदांश्च प्रहिनोति तस्मयि तग्वम् हा देवमात्म बुद्धि प्रकाशम् मुमुक्षुर्वै शरणमहम् प्रपद्ये Eternally devoted souls, let's sing from bhajan book number two, page number one zero nine. Top of the page. Book 2, page 109. Prishta Sankhya 109. Bolo, bolo re mana gaur hari Chaitanya 
चैतन्य हरि बोलो गौर हरि चैतन्य हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना चित्तचोर 
हरे बोलो ब्रज ज बनी तानी चित चोर हरी बोलो ब्रज बनी तानी चित चोर हरी चित चो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरी बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरी बोलो गौर हरी बोलो बोलो रे मना रे मना गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना बोलो गौर हरि गौर हरि गौर हरि 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 बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि सिर मोर हरि सिर मोर हरि बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि बोलो गौर हरि बोलो बोलिए बोलो गौर हरि 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 गौर हरि 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 गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना गौर हरि बोलो बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि चित चोर हरि चित चोर हरि बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि 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 
बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि बोलो ब्रज बनी तनी चित चोर हरि बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि बोलो रसिकन के सिर मोर हरि सिर मोर हरि सिर मोर हरि बोलो गौर हरि बोलो गौर हरि बोलो गौर हरि बोलो गौर हरि बोलो बोलो रे मना 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 बोलिए गौरांग महाप्रभु की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय डिवोटेड लिस्नर्स नाउ आई हम्बली रिक्वेस्ट योर फुल अटेंशन इफ यू हैव योर फोन विद यू प्लीज मेक श्योर नॉट टू यूज इट ड्यूरिंग द लेक्चर सो दैट यू मे बी वेरी अटेंटिव today's topic is krishna our best friend our true beloved we all search for a beloved we all have a need for a friend a beloved we want others to be benevolent towards us so we search all over the world and we create our own little world comprised of parents spouse siblings children friends friends and family members we look towards them to give us their love we want them to be benevolent toward us however as long as a person has not received genuine happiness immeasurable happiness ever increasing happiness he cannot be benevolent towards anyone else he is desirous of happiness for himself and as long as he does not have that happiness he will look for it everywhere in the world he cannot give it because he simply does not have it but we are in the habit of asking one another or expecting from one another that they would give us happiness we expect happiness from others they expect happiness from us they want us to be benevolent toward them we want them to be benevolent toward us but the vedas the eternal vedas the infallible vedas the vedas in which there is no mistake because the vedas are untouched by faulty human logic they are manifested from the natural breath of god so the vedas the eternal vedas say that no one in the world can make you happy no one in the world can give you true love no one can be benevolent towards you there's only one who can be benevolent towards us there's only one who loves us selflessly and that is shri krishna in brihadaranyaka upanishad there's a very lengthy mantra nava are nava are patyasya kamaya patih priyo nava are patyuh kamaya 
पति प्रियो भवत्य आत्मनस्तु का माय पति प्रियो भवति न वा अरे जाया यई का माय जाया प्रिया भवत्य आत्मनस्तु का माय जाया प्रिया भवति न वा अरे पुत्रा नाम का माय पुत्रा ह प्रिया भवन्त्य आत्मनस्तु का माय पुत्रा ह प्रिया भवन्ति एंड इट गोज ऑन टू से मेनी थिंग्स एंड देन इट सेज अति एंड न वा अरे सर्वस्य का माय सर्वम प्रियम भवत्य आत्मनस्तु का माय सर्वम प्रियम भवति आत्मा वारे दृष्टव्य ह श्रोतव्यो मंतव्यो निधि ध्यासितव्यो मैत्रेयि Yagya Valkya is instructing his wife, Maitreyi. O Maitreyi, know that there is no husband in the world who works for the happiness of his wife. There is no wife who is doing anything for the happiness of the husband. There is no child who works for the happiness of the parents. And there is no mother or father in the world who works for the happiness of the child. Everyone is searching for their own happiness. But that doesn't ring true, does it? We say, you know, I have seen this woman, what an amazing woman she is. Her husband was so ill and she nursed him back to health. She hardly slept. She was constantly serving him, giving him medication, inspiring him, giving him, making him uh, soups and what not. She did everything she could. She had many sleepless nights. She would wake all night long. If that's not benevolence, what is it? A mother takes care of her newborn. Mother and father, they hardly have any sleep because that newborn has taken over. 24 hours a day, the newborn needs to be, um, to be paid attention to. They need to be attentive to the newborn's every little need. And the newborn cannot speak, so mother and father, they need to think about what may be bothering their child. If the child cries, they need to figure it out. Is it because of hunger? Is it because of indigestion? Is it the diaper is dirty? What is it? Is the child colic? Whatever, what is the reason? Though if that's not benevolence on part of the parents, then what is it? The scriptures call it selfishness. Selfishness. The wife who is not sleeping all night long, who is not sleeping at all, she's maybe sleeping two hours in a whole day, she is taking care of her husband, she is selfish. Scriptures and saints say yes because she is concerned about her own happiness. And she's thinking about reciprocation as well. When I get sick, then I want him to serve me as I'm serving him. So having this in her mind, she serves her husband. If I don't serve him, why would he serve me? If I don't help him right now, he wouldn't help me at all. It's for this reason she serves him. And another reason is, God forbid that he should die. Then I would lose my happiness. All the happiness I get from him, I will no longer have it. So I must serve him. Parents have great expectations from their children. I must take care of this child. This child is going to bring me so much happiness, so much joy, so much, I'm going to be so proud. This child is going to make me proud. A young couple was arguing. The wife was saying, our child is going to become a doctor. The man, her husband was saying, no, my dear, he's going to be an engineer like me. She said, no, like me, he's going to be a doctor. I tell you, he's going to be a doctor. He said, I'm telling you, he's not going to be a doctor, he's going to be an engineer. And their voices were rising as the argument was getting more and more heated. There happened to be a walker by, a passerby. They were walking in the park and they're arguing like this. So the passerby said, excuse me, I couldn't overhear you. I couldn't help overhearing you. I'm not spying 
but may I put in my two cents worth? <clears throat> Can I just tell you what I think? Because I do have children. They said, yes, go ahead. And he said, you know, children have a mind of their own, so whether your child becomes a doctor or an engineer, leave it up to the child. That's my suggestion. So what does your child say? They say, we don't have children. <laughs> so why are you talking like this? Well, when we do have children, we're planning on that, that when we do have children, that child, the firstborn, is going to be a, a doctor, she says. No, engineer, and they keep on arguing with each other. He's going to, be make, he's going to make me so proud, the mother is thinking, by becoming a doctor. He's going to make me so proud, he's gonna follow in my footsteps when he becomes an engineer, thinks the father. So many expectations and the child isn't even born yet. Now what to speak of the expectations once the child is born? My son, my child is going to be like this. My child is going to be the best child of all. My child is gonna make me so proud. My child is gonna succeed in life. So many expectations, parents set themselves up for disappointments. The right way to think is, we will do the best for our child, but then the child, this child, is going to bring his or her own sanskars. She's going to bring her own sanskars with her, and so, and then she will have her own choices in life, but we shall do our best. We will do our duty. We will not look at the, <clears throat> we will not think about the consequences. We will just do our duty. We will not be attached to the fruits of our actions. So there is always a desire to gain something, gain happiness from our loved ones, from the nearest and dearest ones. But they cannot make us happy. We cannot make them happy, they cannot make us happy because happiness is something they don't have. Happiness is something that neither one of us has. They don't have it, we don't have it. And yet we claim, to, we claim to have that happiness. And we say, I will make you so happy. But it's all a false promise. It's a false promise. We cannot give someone something that we don't have. A man is desperate because he, his daughter is getting married and he doesn't have enough money. So he asks for a loan, he asks for some charity, and there's a man who comes up and says, I will give you everything I have. Would you, kind sir, would you give me, will you really give me everything you have? I'll give you everything I have. Please do give, thank you so much. And the man gives $10. $10? I'm a beggar and that's all I have. But I've given you everything I have. That's all I have. So he's not wrong, he's given everything he has, but what he has is only $10. That's nothing. So we also say, I'll give you everything I have, but what we have is nothing. We don't have that genuine happiness that will satisfy anyone. Sri Krishna is the only one, therefore, Saints have said, Ek bharoso, ek bal, ek aas vishwas, ek ram ghan syam hit chatak tulsi das. Saint Tulsi das says, I have faith in only one. Call him Ram, call him Ghan Sham. He is the one and only for me. Shri Krishna, who has nothing to attain, he has everything. Even the one who surrenders to him receives everything from Shri Krishna. So Shri Krishna and his saints don't need to do anything. They don't need to gain anything. Therefore, they don't need to do anything. Name partha asti kartavyam trishu lokeshu kinchana 
ನಾನವಾಪ್ತಮವಾಪ್ತವ್ಯಂ ವರ್ತ ಎವ ಕರ್ಮಣಿ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಡೂ ಯು ಸಿ ವಿ ಡೂ ಮೆನಿ ವಿ ಪ್ರಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಮೆನಿ ಆಕ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೇನ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಟೇನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಸೊ ವಿ ಕೀಪ್ ಆನ್ ಡೂಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಓರ್ ದಿ ಅದರ್ ಬಟ್ ವಟ್ ಡಸ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಟೇನ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೇಸ್ ಐ ಡೋಂಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಐ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಮೆನಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸೇಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಡಸ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಸೇಕ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಸೇಂಟ್ಸ್ ವಟ್ ಎವರ್ ದ ಗಾಡ್ ರಿಯಲೈಸ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಬನೆವ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಬನೆವ್ಲೆಂಟ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಟ್ರೂಲಿ ಬನೆವ್ಲೆಂಟ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಗೇನ್ someone who attains god realization has nothing left to do tasya karyam na vidyate he has no work left to do all the work has been done he has received unlimited immeasurable happiness that he will have forever and ever and that happiness is going to increase with every passing moment please keep that in mind that happiness he has received is going to keep on increasing with every passing moment and it will never come to an end it will keep on increasing it will continue to increase for all eternity and it will never be complete it will never come to a standstill and we can understand that this personality can be benevolent just as before before he had attained happiness he could not do anything for anyone else he could only do things for himself in the same way now he cannot do anything for himself because there's nothing left to do now everything he does is for the sake of others but we see these saints when they come to this world we see just like shri krishna says i do many works they also are working they do many works they write books they they give lectures they talk to people they perform so many actions but we ask them why are you doing anything okay i won't do anything i'll just sit down why are you sitting i'll stand why are you standing i'll lie down why are you lying down okay i'll talk why are you talking why are you speaking you should not be doing anything because you have done everything there's nothing left for you to do why are you working i am working because i'm looking for happiness i'm doing something or the other 24 hours a day but and that's because i want happiness why are you working shri maharaj ji gives a wonderful example to answer this question why does a saint work why is he still working take some butter in a skillet and put it on a lit stove the stove is on the fire is there and you put the skillet on it and you put butter in it the butter will melt as the butter melts it gets rid of its impurities as it cooks it gets rid of its impurities and as it is cooking it makes crackling sounds doesn't it crackling sounds and those crackling sounds come fast and furious very fast and then as the butter cooks more and more it becomes more and more pure so the sound that's coming from it the crackling sounds they are not so fast and not so loud they get smaller and not so frequent and when once the butter is completely cooked all the impurities have gone now it's become ghee there's no more sound there's no more crackling sound because there's nothing left to do the this butter has become ghee it's become pure all the impurities have left and that's like a saint the saint has become quiet in other words there's nothing left for him to do but why is he still working you might say well you know i heard the ghee and i found the, I, i heard the crackling sounds coming again why 
It's because someone put raw dough in it to make puri, to fry the puris. So when the raw dough went into it, no, kachata, then the ghee spoke again. It made sounds again, not for itself, but to cook that raw dough, to make it into puri. Once the puri was made, again there was silence. The ghee was silent again until you put another, you, you put, once again, you put raw dough in, in it and then it speaks again. And once the puri is cooked, it becomes quiet again. So in the same way, the saint, when he's working, he's working to help us, to help the world. If he does not give discourses, then how would we learn? If he does not speak to us, if he does not explain difficult concepts of the Vedas to us, how will we get rid of our doubts? How will we get any clarity? All the actions that he performs are for the sake of others because he has nothing left to do. A devotee asked Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj, Maharaji, what are your activities throughout the day? Sri Maharaji said, I do whatever is needed to do, whatever I need to do to take a person towards God. That is what I do all day long. That's my daily activity. Those are my daily activities. I do whatever I have to do to take people towards God. That's all that a saint does. There is no selfish bone in his body. There is no self-interest to fulfill through anyone. God has given him immeasurable happiness, unlimited knowledge, everything God has, now the saint has. So tasmins tajjane bheda bhavat. There is no difference between God and the one who has attained God. No difference between God and a saint. So in the world, there can be no one who is our true friend, our true beloved, our benevolent to us. No one can be benevolent to us. This does not mean that everybody in the world is evil, not by any means. We are completely helpless. We cannot help, we cannot do anything for the happiness of another because we simply don't have happiness to give. Until we attain liberation from maya, we will not, we cannot be benevolent towards others. Even though it may be seen that a person is building orphanages. He has built 10 orphanages. He has built 50 hospitals. He's always feeding people. He's spending his entire time helping others. What's his self-interest? It makes him happy to do all this. It satisfies him. It gives him great satisfaction to do this. Or perhaps he wants, he wants to attain Swargalok and he's working towards that. There has to be some selfish motive or the other. But when we look at such a person, we say completely selfless. What to speak of humans? We even say people, I've heard people say, you know, my dog loves me selflessly. Even a human cannot love us selflessly. How can a dog love anyone selflessly? You give dog a home to, nice, comfortable home to live in. You give the dog a shelter and food, water, affection, and the dog loves you back. It's not selfless. But in the world we, we see that it seems that there are people who are working selflessly, but it cannot be. If they're controlled by maya, there is, there has to be a self-interest. So Sri Krishna is our true friend and our selfless friend, selfless beloved. He loves us without any expectations. He does not give his grace. He does not do favors for the one 
who believes in him, or who is completely surrendered to him, he even, he's even benevolent to those who don't have faith in him. He's benevolent to those who are not at all surrendered to him. He doesn't differentiate that you're my, you do believe in me and you don't. So for you, I'll provide air, water, sunshine, food, clothing. And for you, nothing, mister. Mr. Atheist, every time you drink water from my world, in my world, when you drink water, that water will turn to poison. So go ahead and drink the water. How dare you not believe in me? How dare you become an atheist? No such thing. He gives, Sri Krishna gives grace to, to everyone, to all his children, whether they accept him as the father and true friend and beloved or not, whether or not. Whether they praise him or they give him gali, they abuse him verbally. He is such a selfless friend. Dva suparna sayuja sakhaya, say the Vedas. He is our eternal friend. He is the eternal friend of the individual soul, the jivatma. And he keeps on working for us. And we give it no, we give it no thought. We give no thought to the fact that he is helping us in so many ways, so many ways. How much time do we take out to think about this? You know, Sri Krishna has helped me so much. God has helped me so much. How is it that when I didn't even have teeth, when I was um, a newborn, I, how is it that I survived? Oh, he created milk within my mother's body so I could, I could drink that milk. But have you ever thought, how is it that a child even knows how to suck that milk? God gives that, that newborn the memory from previous lives. Otherwise, every newborn would die because who is there to teach the newborn what to do, how to drink the milk? God is helping us in ways that we can never even imagine. And how often do we think about all this? He's serving us each and every moment. He's such a friend. Selfless friend. He is the one who is ours, who is truly ours. Everyone else can claim to be our friend, but they cannot be true friends. But Sri Krishna is. But we might become hesitant. And Sri Krishna, the Supreme Lord of innumerable universes, you know, Sankhya Chetra Jasa, Mastina Vishwanam Kadachana, Brahma, Vishnu, Shivadi Nam, Tatha Sankhya Vidyate. Devi Bhagavat Puran says that you may one day succeed. It's impossible, but you might just succeed in counting the grains, the, the particles of dust that exist in the world, but you cannot, absolutely cannot, count the innumerable universes that are part of this creation, this formidable creation. And Sri Krishna is the, is the Lord and the master of these innumerable universes. How do, I, how do I form a relationship with him? How can I? I'm like a beggar and he is the Lord of Lords. How can I have any connection with him? So we are told by the true lovers of Sri Krishna, the true saint, the, the genuine saints, the, the, we're told by the guru, look, don't be hesitant to go close to him because he's not just God. Don't think of him as being God. You know he's God, but put that in the back of your mind. In the forefront of your mind, just think he is my merciful master, my mother and father, and my eternal friend, and my own child, and my very own beloved. Have these four relationships with him. Strengthen these four relationships with him. Think of him to be your everything, your mother, father, master, friend, child, and most of all, your beloved. 
and also shri krishna is the same narayan in vaikuntha lok is the same as shri krishna but you don't want to think about you don't want to do roop dhyan of narayan in in vaikuntha lok because there's majesty there and there's shri krishna in dwarika he's the king of dwarika you don't want to don't want to love him you don't want to do roop dhyan of dwarika dhish krishna you don't want to do roop dhyan of uh, shri krishna who is in mathura you don't want to even you want to think about shri krishna who is in vrindavan but not just in vrindavan go further you want to you don't want to just think about shri krishna who is in vrindavan and you don't want to think about shri krishna who is in the kunj the groves the pleasure groves of vrindavan you want to be a devotee of you want to think about do roop dhyan of shri krishna who is in nikunj in the very personal groves pleasure groves of vrindavan he should be your ishta dev he is the one you should regard as your friend he is the one who will never leave you so don't don't think about the majestic narayan do not think about dwarika dhish krishna because there's a lot of majesty in him in mathura there is sweetness but not so much sweetness as majesty and then in vrindavan there is nectar but then there's greater nectar in shri krishna who is performing pastimes in the kunj in the groves but then there is even more happiness and an even greater nectar to be had from shri krishna who is in the inner groves nikunj he is the ishta dev so there was a holy man a devotee of shri krishna he was an old man and he started living in vrindavan his devotion he worked on his devotion his devotion grew to amazing heights and there came a point when he would see shri krishna he would see shamsundar in front of him a few feet away so he would rush towards him and then he would say no he's not here oh he's gone over there then he would rush towards that side oh where's that trickster he's gone somewhere oh he's over there and he would run in that direction oh he's climbed a tree and all day long he would be seeing shri krishna like this and running towards him to, to catch him so one day he saw shri krishna in the in the bushes standing near the bushes and he rushed towards shri krishna and his matted locks got stuck they got tangled in the in the brambles in the bushes but this devotee did not untangle his hair he was going to but then he thought oh i think he likes to see me like this my ishta dev nikunj wale shri krishna sham sundar he likes to see me like this so i will just i will not move i'll just keep on standing like this some people came by they saw him they said we can help you he said stop don't touch me this is between husband and wife what what husband what wife he is my beloved and if anyone is going to touch me it is going to be he they said pagal hai mad man all we wanted to do was to help him some more people came again he said stay away from me they all left then shri krishna had to come shri krishna had to come to him but he came in the form of a very old man and he said baba ji why are you standing like this and he said what is what business is this your business this is none of your business just go along no no who are you waiting for over here my beloved nikunj wale sham sundar and that old man shri krishna he said i am your beloved and this devotee started to laugh <laughs> you are my beloved have you seen your face in the mirror you are my beloved shri krishna had to reveal his true form he gave divine eyes to this devotee so that the, the devotee could see this is krishna but he was very clever he said how do i know you are 
Sri Krishna from Nikunj. Well, I'm telling you, no, I, I need someone to attest this fact. If it is indeed a fact, I need uh, Radharani to vouch for you. <laughs> How do I know? You may be uh, Sri Krishna from Dwarika. You may be Sri Krishna from Mathura. You may be Sri Krishna from Rindavan or from Kunj. But I want, my Ishtadev is Sri Krishna from Nikunj. Sri Krishna smiled, he accepted defeat and Radharani had to come. She said, no, no, he is <laughs> Nikunj Vale Sri Krishna. So he is our beloved. And he is so merciful that he never leaves us. We have not always had the human form. Uncountable times we have been born in the form of uh, a dog, a cat, a monkey, a donkey, a mosquito. We have lived in the, in the dirtiest of gutters. We have been in every form of life, but he did not leave us. He didn't say, you know what, when you go to the human form, then I'll come. Bye for now. He's not a fair weather friend. He stayed with us, no matter which form of life we went into. When we were sent to Naraklok, the hellish abode, he was also there with us. When we went to Swarg, he was there. He has always been with us. He's a true friend. He's not opportunist, opportunistic friend. He's not, he's not like that. He is a true friend, always with us. Always gracing, always, always helping, always being benevolent towards us. So knowing, knowing this, what should my relationship be like with my family members? Should I just fight with them and say, you selfish people? Not at all. If they are, if we call them selfish, we are also selfish. They're good people. But how can anyone give us happiness if they don't have it for themselves? So we must do our duty towards family. Do your duty towards your family members. Duty and attachment are often lumped together. People say, duty, attachment, same thing. Two different things. Duty without attachment. Do your duty in the world, but keep the mind attached to Shamsundar. Your loved one, let's say your loved one is ill. So, do whatever you need to do. Let's say a mother's, a woman's child, her daughter is very ill. So if, she's, if she acts with attachment, she'll say, hi, my Margai, hi, my Margai. Oh my God, what will happen? What will happen? I'm, I'm gone, I'm gone. If anything happens to my child, she's not helping the child. She's not doing her duty. She takes the, takes the child to the doctor, gets the child the proper care, proper medication, proper diagnosis to begin with, then she is doing her duty. She's doing her duty, but without attachment, and duty without attachment is always, it's always much better. The consequences are much better. It, the duty is done properly, I should say, when it is without attachment. What happens in attachment is that the heart melts. And then we cannot remain neutral. We don't often, we often don't do what we need to do because our heart has melted with attachment, due to attachment. Let's say there's a judge and in her court a case comes, and a property case, and one of the litigants is her own brother. She will step away from this case. I, I cannot judge this because one of them is my own brother. So another judge takes her place. A surgeon will refuse to work on her own child. I cannot do surgery on my own son. But why not? You are the best there is. No, no, no. My hands are trembling, don't you see? I cannot do surgery on him. Another surgeon has to step in. 
So you see, when there's attachment, our duty is disturbed. So Sri Krishna says, do your duty in the world so you do it well and keep your mind attached to me. We often think that there's, you know, such a problem. What do I do? Do I love God or do I love... God says, I, there's two different departments. One is godly department, the other is a worldly department. The world says, what? Do your duty. Everyone in your family says, do, do your duty. And God says, don't do your duty towards me, love me. The world needs us to do our duty towards the world. And Sri Krishna says, I want your love. So there's no dilemma. There's no confusion. Can you imagine a scenario like this? You tell your family, I'm not getting out of bed. I'm just going to think loving thoughts about all of you. So you see to your breakfast, lunch, dinner, you just see to the, you, you do dishes, you do the laundry. I'm going to lay down here all day long. I'm just going to think very loving thoughts about you. Oh, I love you guys so much. <laughs> what will the family say? <laughs> what will we do with your love? <laughs> are we going to make pickle out of it? <laughs> or ice cream out of it? What are we going to do with your love? We don't want your love. Do the work. <laughs> make breakfast. Children say, make breakfast, mommy. That's how you show your love towards us. Give us our clothes to wear. Take the clothes out of the dryer. We don't have any clothes to wear. Give us the clothes. We have to go to school. Do things for us. That is enough. That means you love us, okay? That's it. Don't lay in bed all day long thinking loving thoughts about us. That's craziness. So what does the world really want? Everybody in, in your world wants you to do your duty towards them. And Sri Krishna says, go ahead, do your duty towards them. Don't give them your mind. Give me your mind. Tasmat sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara yudhya cha. O Arjun, do your duty physically, but keep your mind engaged in me at all times. Sarveshu kaleshu mamanusmara. Think of me all the time while doing your duty, and that is fighting the battle. So there is no confusion. And this fact that Shri Krishna, Shri Krishna is our true friend, our loving friend. He's the one who's benevolent to us. He's our true beloved. Our mind has to understand this. The mind has to accept this. First, the mind has to hear it. The mind has to think about it. The mind has to make up its mind. The mind has to decide. The intellect will have to decide. So we have to tell our mind, look, understand this. Shri Krishna is the only one who is yours. So do your duty towards your family and your friends and your society, your country, but give your heart to God. Keep your mind engaged in Sri Krishna alone, for he is the one who was always yours and who will always remain with you. He has never forsaken you for half a moment and he will never forsake you ever. He's always looking at you. He's the eternal witness. He's Sarvasakshi. He never takes his eyes off you. He's always looking without blinking because any moment that the individual soul becomes surrendered, Sri Krishna says, then I will have to give that individual soul many, many gifts. So he never takes his eyes off us. He is such a loving and benevolent friend Oh, my mind, understand this. So our mind has to understand this. Our mind has to accept this. And then everything will be fixed. Once our mind understands this, then we won't have to do anything else. This is the message of Jagat Guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj. The message extracted from the Vedas, the Purans, and so many other scriptures. Boliye Srimad Sadguru Sarkar ki jai, Srimad Yugal Sarkar ki jai, jai jai Shri Radhe, jai jai Shri Radhe, jai jai.